Hello Booktube, my name is Kate, this is my channel Chapter Kate. Today's video is going to be extra spooky because it's Halloween. Okay, it's not actually that spooky, but it's spooky for me. Because today I'm going to be doing a book recommendations video based on all of my random weird irrational fears. Personally I am of the mind that we all have weird irrational fears that we don't we might not talk about. I know someone who's afraid of cotton balls. I know someone else who's afraid of chalk. I know someone who's afraid of belly buttons. So today I'm going to talk about my weird irrational fears and I'm going to give you book recommendations based on a very loosely related thing but we're going to just go with it. My number one weird rational fear is people touching or being near or looking at my ears. I don't know why this is. I mean I have some theories but I don't I don't like it. I don't like people near my ears or around my ears. That's why I like to wear my hair down covering my nice ears. That's why I have super fluffy headphones and that's why I don't have my ears pierced and I am uncomfortable even talking about my ears right now. So, my recommendation for fear number one is the Tithe Trilogy by Holly Black. I'm not sure if this was like talked about a lot on book two before I joined or not. Um, I know Holly Black is talked about often, especially with The Cruel Prince. I got these and read these before I joined book two, so I'm not sure how much it was talked about. These were actually a gift um, to me, and I was so happy when I found them because I love fairy mythology and I would write in fairy mythology using that as a source for my writing and stuff and I've always just loved fairies and the idea of fairies and the fact that they're a lot darker than they are portrayed in like Disney films and other things like that. So when I got these I was just so freaking excited and the way that this is super loosely connected to my first irrational fear is the fact that the fairies kind of have like pointy ears. So yeah. That's how we're, we're gonna link these up. But the thing that I really, really love about Holly Black is the fact that she brought that darkness into the fairies while also allowing them to be somewhat whimsical. Um, but fairies are dark, y'all. I don't know if y'all have read a lot of fairy books or fairy mythology, but like the stuff around fairies is super dark. There was this Tumblr page and it was actually like my favorite Tumblr page and it was called Just Fairy Things and it was, it was terrible, y'all. It was like stealing your children at night wearing your skin. I don't know. I don't know, man, but it's good. These three books are actually all different stories, but you'll see like other characters sort of make appearances, but they're all sort of about mortals fighting their way somehow wrapped up in the fairy world, whether they are a fairy, whether they fall in love with a fairy or a goblin or whatever, but it's three separate stories of mortals sort of finding their way into fairy. You should check it out. Irrational fear number two is bridges. This isn't terribly irrational. I've always been terrified of heights, um, but bridges especially are so freaking scary to me. I don't know what it is. I think it's the fact that you have a nice point over here and you have a nice point over here and there's nothing in the middle under this thing and I just, I don't, I feel like it's going to crumble and I'm going to fall off of it somehow. So when I'm driving and I have to stop on a bridge and it's like moving, I'll have to like bounce in my seat so I don't feel the fact that the bridge is moving. It just makes me very anxious. And they're building a bunch of new bridges around here that I get to drive on and I hate it so much. I'm not okay. And my book recommendation for bridges is Beyond a Dark and Shore. This amazing book is by Jessica Leek and I love her. I talk about her a lot. She's local which just makes me so happy. But it perfectly bridges Celtic mythology and Norse mythology into this one amazing story. I like that different deities can exist in this story and they all acknowledge that other deities exist. They just think that theirs are better. And also the Morgan. I love the Morgan. This book follows Kira who is a Celt and she is the daughter of a king and she is a warrior and she has a way of getting into people's heads during battle, quite literally. She can actually get into their heads and she can control people and it's terrifying. And then we have Leif, who's a Norseman. He's a an extremely skilled um, warrior as well. So they, you know, go on an adventure. There are several cliches in this, and it's her first YA book, but I did not mind it at all, honestly. It was really cool. I also love the fact that she just went there. A lot of writers, I feel like, when they're dealing with mythology or um, including abilities, they kind of put limitations on it. 
she didn't put limitations on Kira, to be honest. She allowed the magic and the mythology to just run rampant, and it very much felt like mythology. It it felt over the top, and it felt like I was transported into those myth mythological stories, and it was just mind-blowing. She also has a, another book coming out next year called Through the White Wood, and it's going to be more Russian mythology, I believe, um, but it's going to include the characters in this book, and I cannot wait for it. My next irrational fear is scorpions. Okay, this is fair. A lot of people are scared of spiders. I'm not. I'm scared of bees. But scorpions, I've never actually seen a scorpion, but I've heard so many people talk about seeing scorpions places that I will literally sometimes get it in my head that there are scorpions everywhere and I cannot walk on the ground. I just have to like, I get freaked out. So that's what makes it kind of irrational. My book recommendation for this one is one that I haven't read in a very long time and it is The House of the Scorpion by Nancy Farmer. I don't remember if I read this book in middle school or high school, but it follows this dude named Matt. And Matt's life seems very odd, like he's very sheltered. And honestly, this is the first really out there science fiction book that I've ever read. I used to read the Alex Ryder books and they were like sci-fi and that they had cool gadgets and technology and things. But this was like the most weird sci-fi book I read when I was younger. Um, Matt, the main character, is essentially a clone of this guy who was like the opium king. He's over opium, um, drug dealing, all that good stuff. Maybe not good stuff, but you know. Um, and basically Matt was created so that the Opium King could harvest organs and stay alive as, you know, forever. Um, so it's disturbing. It's very disturbing, but it's such an adventure. Um, I haven't read it in so long, so I'm not sure how well it is aged, but I just remember that I really enjoyed it when I did read it and that I wanted to read it like several times, but I, it was from the library, so I couldn't read it a bunch of times, but it's really good. Irrational fear number four is anthropomorphic animals. I know this is weird. Most of these are kind of strange. But the reason for this is when I was little, I had front row seats to like Sesame Street Live or something like that. And it was terrifying. Those things do not look friendly up close. Um, but I've kind of developed where I feel very scared and uncomfortable of people in mascot uniforms that look like animals. And yes, this includes furries. And it also includes cartoons. Um, that look similar to furries, like they have people t characteristics, but they're not. They're animals. And I don't know if it's because of the Uncanny Valley or what. I just cannot. They scare me. I am. I feel deeply disturbed when I see it. And for this, I'm going to recommend the Serafina series. Um, I only have the first three. He's writing the fourth one, I believe, right now. Um, but this is a middle grade series. It's Serafina and the Black Cloak, Serafina and the Twisted Staff, and Serafina and the Splintered Heart. Um, and these books are so cool. I've, ugh, I just love them. Of course, I'm a little biased because my main reason I love these is because this story takes place local. It takes place in um, Asheville, which is not far from where I live. I was actually engaged in the Biltmore house, and that's where this actually takes place. And it's really, really cool. Um, and Serafina's dad actually is a mechanic that works on the elevators in the Biltmore house. And she likes to run around and adventure. And no one knows she actually lives in the house because she sleeps, like, on a mat in the basement I guess like where everybody that works there sleeps um but the reason I'm choosing this one for anthropomorphic animals is because there is mythology based around catamounts in here which are people who can turn into like wild cats and it's really cool and it's just an interesting mythology that I've never really read about and the fact that the magic is here and local and not you know in some magical land or in Europe or somewhere like that um it's local and it makes it feel close to home and I absolutely loved that and it's a great adventure story. Serafina is so brave. The sort of catchphrase for this is be bold or stay bold. I think I have one of these signed and it has the catchphrase on it. Stay bold. Okay but these are by Robert Beatty and he is just such a gift. I appreciate him. Okay so the next Irrational fear is heights. This is very closely related to the bridges irrational fear, but it's a little bit different. Um, I can be really high up on stairs and I will get scared. Um, roller coasters can't do them. Can't do the top floor of malls. 
I uh, can't do stuff like that. I think a big part of that is because I get really dizzy when I'm up high. I kind of get vertigo and I'm scared I'm going to fall. And I used to have these dreams when I was little that I was in the top floor of the mall and I would fall and roll close to the edge. And it just kept happening over and over and over again. And it made me sort of develop a fear of heights. The recommendation for this irrational fear is Sleeping Giants. This is a trilogy by Sylva Neuville. And it is a science fiction adult trilogy about um, a scientist who finds a large hand of a robot. And then she decides to pursue that and find all the pieces of the robot. Um, and then there's business with aliens. They're trying to communicate with, you know, extraterrestrial life. And then it sort of poses, you know, that question. It doesn't specifically pose that question but it makes you think about it how are we gonna sort of deal with alien life forms when we can't even deal with our own differences here on earth um at least that's what i took away from it but it's a really gorgeous series um i have two paperbacks and one hardback so i really need to make them match but anyway but it's actually written um in an alternative format it has like it's all interviews pretty much there's a couple of like news reports in here and like journal entries but it's primarily interviews and the interviewer the interviewer yes the interviewer is actually one of my favorite characters and it's just really well put together and very witty and I talked about before that I really love languages and one of the main characters likes to study language and yeah it's great and it was just definitely a five-star series for me I loved it. Irrational Fear number six is open cups and drinks. I don't like drinks if they don't have like a lid on top of them. Um, restaurants I can do it sometimes but like at home I have to have a cover on my cups. Coffee has to be in a thermos. Things have to have lids on them. One time I drank a bug and now I feel like that's gonna happen. Something's gonna get in my drink. It's gonna be dust or bugs or dirt or something is gonna get in my drink. So I have to always have my drinks covered when I drink them. And the and the recommendation for this one is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. If you've read this, one of the main characters named Sarai, she has a magic sort of ability um, involving moths and her mouth. And I can't. This story follows Laszlo, who is a librarian, basically, who is always seeking those adventures that he reads about. And he finally gets to go on that adventure, but only after fighting tooth and nail to do so. And there are also these creatures these beings that are like half god half human and it has a lot of interesting points and a lot of interesting narrative on war and the different sides and how they perceive their own side of that fight on top of that Lenny taylor's writing is very lyrical and gorgeous and just beautiful to sort of digest it's just so good irrational fear number seven is john goodman the actor he scares me I don't know why I'm terrified of John Goodman. I just am. I feel like it's because he's such a good actor. There was fur in my mouth. I feel like it's because he's such a good actor that when he's angry, I get like anxious. Um, I don't do well with anger and he just makes me anxious when I see him and he get, he acts angry on something. It's just, I can't. So, <laughs> the book recommendation for this weird irrational fear is The Night Circus um, by Aaron Morgenstern. The way that this is related is such a reach and it's the magic in this the magic system is so whimsical and makes you feel like anything is possible in this magic system that it feels real to you and that's why John Goodman scares me is because his acting makes his anger feel real the same way this writing makes the magic feel real. Like I can see it and it's gorgeous. I love the way it's written. I love the premise of it. It's just a gorgeous book and I want to read it like three more times at least. Irrational fear number eight is taking a bath or a shower in my bathroom alone without my dog in there. Because when I was younger, I watched a show called Courage is the Cowardly Dog. You've probably heard of it if you haven't. That's fine. It was terrifying. It was an absolutely terrifying cartoon. And there was an episode where this like creepy mermaid situation 
came up through the drain and like grab people and take them down through the drain into this creepy underwater land and I just no no thank you things like that I just my imagination is so vivid and out there it likes to torture me so the recommendation for this rational fear is the Looking Glass Wars trilogy. Um, this is a trilogy that is a retelling of Alice in Wonderland. Um, the reason it's connected to this is because in here, imagination can be used as a weapon. Um, Alice in here and also the Red Queen have a power of imagination, being able to create things with their minds. There's a war, the, oh my gosh, the way that they use their imagination in this to create things is so, like, gruesome sometimes and also so beautiful sometimes and I absolutely love the way that they took that classic and turned it into this. I've seen a lot of Alice retellings and I've read several. I love that this was a series and not just a single book. Um, Christina Henry's Alice is actually two books unless she's gonna write more but I loved this and also Hatter in this is like a military guy and I think he has his own graphic novel but I haven't gotten a hold of that yet so number nine is checking my email in college I got a lot of angry emails because I would miss things and I would sleep through things I had a really hard time um, with my mental health in college and like actually sleeping through the night so I would go every other night without sleeping and sometimes that would mean I would crash right before my classes and I would miss class or I'd miss an assignment or I'd miss that or this or that and so I would get angry emails and that made me very scared to check my email because I'm always scared something bad is going to happen um so now if I check my email and there's not anything bad there I am surprised pleasantly with that said my recommendation for this rational fear is smoke and mirrors it's all about having something unexpected at the end this is a book of short stories by Neil Gaiman and Every story has an unexpected sort of twist to the end. It kind of leads you to think one thing's sort of going to happen or leads you to think something is going to be a certain way and then just throws you for a loop. All of the stories in here were just so interesting. But if you do pick this up, please, please, please read the introduction. I know some people like to skip the introduction. Please don't do that because the introduction has like my favorite story in the entire book read the introduction. And then my last irrational fear is really just honestly social anxiety. But it's people who are very overly confident and they like to make excessive eye contact. I don't do well with eye contact to be honest. I can't think if I'm looking someone in the eyes so I'm often you know looking everywhere every which way. So if I don't look at the camera a lot it's because I'm trying to think and when I think I can't look at one fixed spot. It just doesn't work for me. So for this one for this one, I'm going to recommend the Darth Bane trilogy. It's a Star Wars trilogy from the extended universe, so not the current Star Wars universe. I have two paperbacks and one <laughs> hardback. We have every Star Wars book from the extended universe, but most of them are these. Um, some of them don't match. Um, but Darth Bane is a Sith Lord, and he has an apprentice named Xana. Darth Xana or Reyna before she became a Sith. And Darth Xana can mess with your mind a lot. Um, and she's... Basically, like if you put Wanda Maximoff, Scarlet Witch, into the Star Wars universe, she has those kind of abilities. And so that's how that's connected to that irrational fear. It kind of discusses the rule of two. If you know anything about Star Wars, there's always one Sith and one apprentice. And Darth Bane is actually the one that created that rule and sort of fought to um, keep that rule for the Sith Lords. I sound like such a nerd right now, but I'm okay with it. It's such a good trilogy. But that is all of my recommendations based on my irrational fears. I try to talk about books I don't talk about as much, but I'm not so good at that because if I like a book, I will keep going back to it. Yeah. And now it's time for a booktuber spotlight. Today's booktuber spotlight goes to Steph from Steph's Rom Book Talk. She talks a lot about romance novels, which I feel like people don't do a lot on booktube. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but she does it. It's like she's taken pretty much the romance novels and decided to talk about them all herself. <laughs> I know there are people out there that talk about romance novels, but she's always the first one I think of when I think of romance novels. And she's very regular uploading, and I love the way she talks about books. She just is not ashamed to talk about them the way that they should be talked about. If they're steamy, she's going to let you know. If they are dud, she's also going to let you know. But I definitely think you should check her out if you like romance or if you just like to be entertained. I don't even read romance, but I love watching her videos. But that's all I'm going to talk about today. Comment below with some of your irrational fears because I love to hear about these. And that's all. And that's all for this video. If you would like more of this junk, subscribe below. Bye!
Slipping over shadows and I'm drowning in the night I feel the soldiers coming and I'm pulling up a fight I feel my eyelids closing under the weight of 